Um, this lesson is on private versus state school. Um, last lesson, you looked at a range of different types of schools. You looked at academies, free schools, independent schools, etc. cetera. Um, we're going to focus on these two types of school because there is a big debate about whether private schools or state school education should um, operate in the UK. Should we have both or should um, we get rid of private schools or should we get rid of state schools? So we're going to be comparing them today. So just note that a state school is any type of school that is funded by the government. So an academy would be considered a state school. A free school is also a state school, um, as well as comprehensives, which is you know the type of school we have. Um, private schools are sometimes called independent schools. And there's another term for certain pu uh, private schools called public schools, which we'll look at later. Um, it is a little bit confusing that they have lots of different names for essentially similar type of school. Um, so just bear with me on that one. Private school, independent school is essentially a school that is run by a non-state organisation. So it's not run by the government um, and it's run by uh, an, a company. Uh, um, and families have to pay for their children to attend. So there's a, a fee to pay each term usually. So think about what you already know about private schools. You might know somebody who's, who's been to one or goes to one at the moment. Um, what sort of characteristics do you associate with a private school compared to a state school? Generally, people associate larger class sizes with state schools compared to private schools, but also think about extracurricular activities. What sort of things um, do private school students get to do uh, that perhaps are not all state school children? Um, if you don't know anything about a private school, you don't know anyone who's been to one, don't worry. Um, that's what we're going to look at now. So what are private schools like? Um, this is a clip um, of a, a program called School Swap, where some students from state schools um, swap with some students at a private school and they get to experience each other's school. The clip that's there is episode two, and it's where the state school children go to visit the private school children um, and they get to see what, what their school is like. So have a look at that. You, you don't have to watch all of it. It is an hour, so you can just watch clips of it if you want to. Um, it's not essential to watch the whole thing. But what I would like to do is watch the clip and note some similarities between state and private schools and differences. So you might want to think about the rules of school. Do they have similar rules or different rules? Um, what are their uniforms like? Are there any similarities and differences there? Look at class sizes and also the facilities that are on offer at the two schools. Um, about 7% of pupils in the UK are educated at private schools. So it is a small number, but a disproportionate number of our prime ministers, our top judges, um, etc. come from private schools. And we'll look at that later. So here's some examples of some state schools that you might recognise. Obviously, we've got our, our logo there because we are a state school. Um, School up the road, road um, Mulberry, um, Stepney Boys, um, Mossbourne, etc. Um, so, what are the good and bad things about going to a school that is run by the state? So, advantages: state schools are free, so it means there's no fee for parents to pay. Um, they tend to be more socially mixed in terms of class background um, and ethnic background, which is obviously good, um, allowing students to socially mix. Um, generally, students don't have to travel too far to to go to a state school, usually people go to one that's in their local area, and they tend to provide upward social mobility for poorer students. And that's certainly what a functionalist sociologist would say. It gives them the opportunity to become successful. Disadvantages um, tend to be uh, that the class sizes are larger in state schools. Um, usually 30 is seen as a normal number for a state school class. Um, there tend to be more issues with disruptive behaviour, and there's lots of reasons for that. That might be because the school tends to be much larger. There tends to be um, a higher ratio in terms of teachers to students, so there aren't um, there isn't as much one-to-one uh, -one attention. Um, and also with lots of teachers leaving, you know, lots of retention of teachers is is uh, not as good in state schools. You know, they move on and they get different jobs, and there's less continuity. Um, and there are other reasons as well. Um, and thirdly, high ability students can be held back in state schools, as we said before, because of that teacher student ratio. You know, if you've got one teacher for 30 students, are they going to be able to give as much dedicated attention to those that are higher ability and stretch them um, as much as possible? It might be difficult if you've got lots of students in a class. 
So here's an example of an independent private school, Eton College. You've probably heard of it. It's quite famous. Um, Eton as a private school fees um, to board um, at Eton College. That means you don't just go to the lessons. You actually stay there overnight during term time and you go home uh, during the holidays, a bit like you would if you were at university. Um, they charge £33,000 for the year. Um, so it's quite high, the fee. Um, in comparison, state schools receive around £4,500 for um, each key stage for student. Now, we do get top up uh, funding for some students uh, who perhaps um, are poorer. So if they claim free school meals or maybe they've got a special educational need. Sometimes you can get more, more, more money for those students, but you can see the difference in the, in the amount of money that the schools receive. Elite private schools are sometimes called public schools, and this is confusing because sometimes people refer to state schools as public schools. Um, particularly in America, um, sometimes they refer to public schools as schools that are run by state. But in, in the UK context, Public school means the elite private schools. So how do you know if someone's or a school is an elite private school? Um, well, it's the schools where the teacher has been invited to join the head teachers conference, which is an association of head teachers uh, of, from the world's leading independent schools. So Eton and Harrow are, pub, um, are private schools that have been invited to join this special conference. And so they are known as public schools. Um, you've noticed there's a picture there of David Cameron. You can see him circled in that um, uh, class photo there. Um, if you have time, there's an extension task there to read this article about why Eton has produced so many prime ministers. I think Boris Johnson is the 20th um, in recent years to, to have been um, privately educated at Eton. You might want to have a, have a little read of that article um, because private schools produce a disproportionate number of our politicians and top judges. Um, so there's a, an interesting debate as to um, whether that's fair, um, whether actually they are better, these colleges and, and schools, or whether it's down to the type of students that go there because they often tend to have, as you can see, more money because they can afford these fees. So maybe it's those networks um, that enable them to... to um, achieve these kinds of jobs rather than their actual academic ability. Here's some examples of other um, private schools in and around London. Um, again, you might have heard of some of these. So some of the advantages of attending a private school is that the, the biggest one is the lower teacher-student ratio. So smaller class sizes, students receiving more attention. Um, it tends to lead to less behavioural problems. This is obviously a generalisation. I'm sure there are some private schools that have lots of behavioural problems, but this is the overall general trend. Um, they tend to achieve some of the best GCC results in the country uh, and can offer a, a range of extracurricular activities. So if you look at Olympic uh, medalists, a lot of those are attended private schools because um, of resources that the private schools tend to have. They tend to have you know, better sports facilities, uh, music facilities, etc. A lot of actors um, in the UK attended private schools as well because of the facilities. Um, so, yeah, the resources and facilities tend to be better than those in state schools. And obviously that is partly to do with the amount of money parents pay. They can use that money for these resources. Um, boarding schools are said to benefit from the full immersion of staff and students in school life. Imagine if you actually lived at your school and you didn't go home until term time, you'd probably, uh, the end of term, um, you probably would feel perhaps more um, part of the school community. You know, you would have more um, of a structured day because I guess you'd be told when to do your homework. Um, you'd have less freedoms. Um, so really school you have to do if you're living at school. Um, so you might end up um, feeling more immersed in the experience. Um, and Parental input is high in terms of fees, support and expectations. You know, parents are obviously going to hold the teachers to account more as well if they're paying for the the, um, the fees for you to go. So they might you know, check in with teachers more regularly, um, that sort of thing. 
The disadvantages could be that the obviously the fees are expensive. Not everyone can afford them. Um, even some of the cheaper private schools, um, it's still not within the reach of most most people to send their children to a private school. Um, at private schools, teachers do not have to have teaching degrees. Um, they just have to have knowledge of their subjects. And some people see that as a disadvantage um, because it, you know if they're not a specialist in teaching, um, that could be a, a disadvantage. Um, usually students have to pass an entrance exam and that creates inequality because the richer students can afford tuition, whereas the poorer students can't. Um, so the richer students are more likely to pass the test, not necessarily because they're naturally brighter, but because they've been trained how to answer the questions for the entrance test. Um, and lastly, less subject uh, choice is usually available at an independent school. Um, they mostly offer academic routes like International GCSEs uh, and A levels, VTECs and NVQs um, don't tend to be offered as much, and that's because independent schools have a, an academic uh, focus rather than a vocational focus. And um, there is a challenge to ask there: What would a Marxist sociologist think about independent schools? So you might want to have a go at that too. So just check your knowledge um, by answering this. Uh, question. So I've given you two questions. The first one is one that I've given you a model answer for. Um, you can see it says describe one advantage to independent schools. Um, and I think what, what we're missing slightly from our two mark answers is not giving it enough detail. So I've given an advantage. An advantage to independent schooling could be the small class sizes. I get one mark just for identifying one advantage. But then I have to achieve the second mark by explaining why that's an advantage. So why is it a good thing to have small class sizes? So I've said with this, there will be a lower teacher student ratio. And this means students will receive more one to one attention from staff. This will help students progress and lead to high grades. So there's an explanation of why that particular point um, is an advantage. So you need to give that second um section to the answer to get two marks and most of us at the moment are just giving a reason and not really saying why it's a reason or why it's an advantage. So based on that uh, model answer there I'd like you to answer describe one advantage to state schools. So you can use the table from before to answer it. Remember state the advantage and then explain why it is an advantage. And finally just answer these um, true or false questions just to double double check your knowledge. Um, and there is an extension there, um, if you're interested. Write a paragraph arguing for or against the view that private schools should be abolished. It's entirely up to you what side you take, but the aim is to persuade. So I want you to tell me why why you're correct. Why should I believe perhaps what you believe? Um, you can use the tables that we've just, just gone through, or you can do a little bit more extra um, research online to help you with your answer. If you could send over your answer to the two marker and the um, true or false questions by Friday, that would be great. Thanks very much. Bye.